On the edge of real and cyberspace, there is one place you can go. And you found it! Welcome back to KWTV 009, part 2 of installing your own Ubuntu Linux server. Brought to you by ShinyWhiteBox.com Hey guys and girls, welcome to KWTV009, installing your own Ubuntu Linux server, part two. If everything goes well, this episode should not only be available via the nightwise.com website, but I should be inside your iPod or your iPod Touch or your iPhone right now, because since we've moved servers, the KWTV episodes are also available as a download. Yep, you can catch us on your podcatcher. You can catch us in iTunes on whatever me medium that you wish. We are now downloadable. So great stuff if you will want to take us along and, uh, you know, watch the KWTV episodes while you're on the road. So um, all of that is because we moved servers. I've moved away from the Belgian hosting company that I was before, and we are now hosted securely at the Bluehost service. So lots more bandwidth, lots more speed, and lots more storage space to install and download and store episodes like this, the Nightcast, and uh, of course the KWTV series. Today I've got a good full agenda for you. We are going to continue with our series of installing our own Ubuntu Linux server. In the previous episode, <laughs> in the previous episode, I uh, showed you how to install the Ubuntu server. Just run through the installation process right up to the point where you get to log in. But now the fun begins. So today we're going to take a look at how to set a static IP for you for your Ubuntu server because you want to find it on your local network. We're going to take a look at how to do all of the updates and the upgrades and the security patches and stuff like that automatically. I'm going to show you how to install a SSH server, and an SSH server is a secure shell server, which means that you can use a remote command line program to securely connect to your Linux server. This is good news if you want to make a headless box, so you don't need a keyboard and a mouse connected to your Linux server. You just shove it somewhere in the basement and you can connect to it using a great application called Putty. So setting up that SSH server is something we're going to look at today. And of course, we are going to move on from just the Linux side and I'm going to show you how to connect to your Linux server from a Windows machine. Yes, did you hear that right? Windows? Indeed, this is a cross-platform show, so why not? So, all of that and more is coming up in this episode of KWTV 009. We have unlimited bandwidth and storage, but let's get cracking anyway. Okay? Here we go! The first thing that we need to do is log into our new server and uh, see which IP our server has. Because there's two kinds of IPs, the static IPs and the dynamic IPs. The dynamic IPs are given by your router or your DHCP server. But because this is a server and we always want to be able to reach it through the same IP, we're going to give it a static IP. With the ifconfig command, we can take a look at what IP our server has. If you look up top at ETH0, you can actually see what the address the netmask and the gateway is. Copy these IP addresses down because we're going to need them a little bit later on. So in this case the address is 172.16.48.135. It's a funky address because I'm uh, using a VM to do this. And the netmask or the subnet mask. This is 255.255.255.0 or we can always call it slash 24 because there are 24 bits in the subnet mask. That's too complicated. What is important is that you know your gateway. Your gateway is the LAN IP, so the internal IP of your router. In my case, that's 172.16.48.2. DNS servers. Of course, your server uses DNS servers. It uses the ones that are given to it by the DHCP server, but we are going to set them manually a little bit later on. So for this exercise, I have taken the IPs of the OpenDNS DNS servers, which are 208.67.220.220. Now, 
let's get cracking and uh, manually change the IP of our server. To do this, type sudo nano slash etsy slash network slash interfaces. This is a text file that Linux reads in order to know how to configure its interfaces. Hit enter and enter your sudo password. And there you have it. There are several interfaces mentioned in this text file. The ones you go to is the primary network interface, ETH0, like in the lines before. As you can see, it's set to DHCP. We're going to change this to static. Go to the end of the line, remove DHCP, and type static. Next, type the address of the uh, IP that you want to use. This is an IP that is not given by your DHCP server, so try to select something different. In my case, I've gone for 172.16.48.10. This is an address that is not distributed by my DHCP server. That way, I don't get a conflict. The next thing Linux needs to know is its netmask, or its subnetmask. We wrote that down, 255.255.255. 255.0. And finally, you need to tell your Linux where to go when you need to go outside your own network. That's your gateway or the LAN side of your router. In my case, 172.16.48.2. Oops, 2. Hit Control X to save. Click yes and save the file. The second thing that we're going to take a look at is manually configuring the DNS servers. In order to do this, do the following. Type sudo nano slash etsy slash resolve dot conf. This is a text file that tells your Unix machine or your Linux machine which DNS servers it needs to use. As you can see, it's uh, been getting the DNS server of my router, so we're going to give it a different DNS server. And this is the one, uh, you know, the open DNS ones. I would highly advise using them. They protect you from a lot of spam and phishing server uh, things as well. So 208-67-220-220. And for the secondary, 208-67-222-222. Again, Control X, save the file, click Yes, and Enter. Now we have given these new values to our Linux system. We have told it what its new IPs are, but we do need to activate everything. So we are going to restart the networking server. So do this, do sudo etsy.initd slash networking and then tell it what to do restart this will restart your entire networking stack of your Linux server so you don't need to reboot you just restart the networking system now we're going to check again by typing ifconfig and there you see at ETH 0 172 16 48 10 so we did it completely right the network mask is there as well and we're going to try out if it works we're going to ping www.yahoo.com this will test our IP connectivity and we'll test if the DNS servers work properly and as you can see it's all coming in pretty nicely well done static IP is done In the next part of this manual, we're going to do the upgrades and the updates of your Linux server, so in order to keep you secure. Log in with your username and your sudo password, of course. And the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to change the sources list. This is uh, located at, at etsy slash apt. And the sources list is a big directory that tells your Linux server what to do and where to get its software. The first thing that we're going to do is we're going to make a little copy of this sources list because, quite frankly, 
That's important if you do something wrong. Very simple, type sudo cp sources.list and the name of the backup sources.backup. Hit enter. And if we go and look again, we see that we have a file called sources.backup. So if we do something wrong, it's always good to have that backup. To edit the sources list, type sudo nano sources.list. And here you see the sources list. The hashes are comment lines. So that means the computer is not going to read them. The lines without hashes are being read by the computer. If you want to comment something out, so say that the Linux system doesn't have to read a certain item, you can put a hash in front of it. In this case, this file will tell the computer where to get its sources, where to get its software. And this is the line that specifies the CD-ROM. So it's commented out. So our Linux system is never ever going to ask for the CD-ROM. The other ones are several repositories or software databases where your Linux server is going to fetch all of its software. Some of them are commented in and some of them are commented out. Now, in order to get as much software as we can, we are going to comment in or remove the hashed signs on these two lines. Go a little bit further down. There's the partner repository there. Lots of third party software that you can then install straight from the command line and comment those out as well. Using these lines, Linux is going to use all of those addresses to get its software. Save the file and let's see what we can do. The first thing that we need to do is tell the computer to update its server or its software repositories. Do this by sudo apt-get space update. It will now pull in all of these uh, list files or repository files and update them. So the next time you want to install something, Ubuntu knows where to get it and how to download it. Now we are going to tell your computer to upgrade. It's going to make a list of all the software on your Linux server and it's going to upgrade this with the last version. sudo space apt-get space upgrade. As you can see, there are a lot of items that can be upgraded. So just hit yes and enter. With all of that done, we are going to install our SSH server. This will allow us to access our Linux system from another system using the command line. We log in with Nightwise, of course your username and the password, and we install the piece of server that we need, the piece of software that we need. sudo apt-get space install space open ssh server. What will happen is that Linux will get the OpenSSH server package from the repositories and install it on your system just by using a one line command line. Now we have all the options that you can choose from and it asks, do you want to install? Click yes and see as the uh, Linux system is pulling down the package and is installing it completely automatic. And that's it. All done. The next thing we need is an application to connect to our Linux server from another operating system. Of course, a remote shell application. And a good thing is PuTTY. PuTTY is a great, small and free application that lets you connect to the command line of your Linux server by using uh, a Windows machine and being able to do all the Linuxy stuff straight from there. So go to the download page of PuTTY and download the PuTTY.exe. It's a very small standalone program so you can even fit it on a USB stick. I'm going to save it here and we're going to save it 